Now let's talk about joy and sorrow. So another dichotomy here. Then a woman said, speak to us of joy and sorrow. And he answered, your joy is your sorrow unmasked. And the self same well for which your laughter rises was oftentimes filled with your tears. And how else can it be? The deeper that sorrow carves into your being, the more joy you can contain. It is not a cup that holds your wine, the very cup that is burned into the potter's oven, and is not the lute that soothes your spirit, the very wood that was hollowed with knives. When you are joyous, look deep into your heart, and you shall find it is only which has given you sorrow that is giving you joy. When you are sorrowful, look again in your heart, and you shall see that there is truth you are weeping for that which has been your delight. Some of you say, joy is greater than sorrow, and others say, nay, sorrow is the greater. But I say unto you, they are inseparable. Together they come, and when one sits alone with you at the board, remember that the other is asleep upon your bed. Verily you are suspended like scales between your sorrow and joy. Once you are empty, you are at a standstill and balanced. When the treasure keeper lifts you to weigh with gold and his silver, needs must you joy or your sorrow rise or fall. Bars. That's bars, guys. Like, that's a perfect illustration of life isn't all cupped cakes and roses, but it's not totally despicable and despair either. We've got to have some bad to remind us of the good. We have to be, like he says, a lute. So think of a guitar. So if you think of like an acoustic guitar, a lute is kind of like an acoustic guitar. So somebody had to cut that tree and somebody had to hollow it out and make it like acoustic so that it can play stuff. And all that process of removing it, of that kind of barbaric removing of material and tearing away at it to make the wood that eventually becomes this beautiful instrument, that's what gives the instrument its quality. And as he mentioned, is the, is the cup that holds your wine the very cup that was burned into the potter's oven? So didn't a potter work this cup into the mold and then he put it into a kiln, into a fire at like a thousand degrees and fire it so that it becomes hard and able to hold wine? Our lives are like that too. Sometimes we have to get put into the kiln. Sometimes we have to get put into the the fire in order to be hardened and to be able to hold that sweet, sweet drink, that sweet, sweet wine. So nothing new here really being broken down by Gilbron, but I think at the time this was a very existential thing. Like we know now that life is kind of, you need to suffer a little bit and it's kind of funny that a lot of people have taken on to that. It's like, oh, I just need to suffer more. It's like, man, life is just suffering. And people say it ironically as kind of a joke, but that really is the nature of a lot of modern thought experiments or modern schools of philosophy is that our our suffering is indispensable. Like we're always going to suffer, but the chief task in life is to find the reason for that suffering. And I always tell you guys on the stream, I've said it before, whenever you're in a traumatic situation, you can ask two questions. You can ask why, or you can ask what. You can ask, why is this happening to me? Or you can ask, what is this teaching me? When you ask, what is, te what is this teaching me? That's when you are growing and that's when you're learning and that's how you justify the things and the terrible pain that you're feeling. But if you keep asking yourself, why is this happening to me? Then you're just gonna be going in a self isolated circle. You're just going to be spinning your wheels and asking yourself why, why, why? Poor old me, woe is me, all that good stuff. Well, all that bad stuff, I should say. It's bad stuff when you have this kind of existential weird feelings. But that's the, the crux of it. Find meaning in your suffering. Find why it is that the potter put you into that kiln to fire you and to become stronger. And once you understand that, you can come out of the oven and then you are stronger and you can hold that sweet, sweet drink.